Hey everybody, welcome to this A plus 1201 performance-based question where I'm going to walk you through this performance-based question step by step, making sure we really take it slow and easy, giving you a chance to one, test yourself to see if you're ready for the real thing, and two, learn a little bit along the way, just in case you're not too sure. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get straight into it. This A plus 1201 performance-based question starts with this text that says, your colleague has sent you a rough sketch of his company's network map. He has asked for your help placing the relevant hardware in the correct locations. Each piece of hardware can be used as many times as you like. You may leave boxes empty. Okay, so that's rough instructions. We know we are going to get a description and a sketch. Let's go to the next one and see what we get. Okay, this one looks like the verbal or written description of the network. And on the next one, we have the visual representation of the network. And then on the next slide, we have our hardware options that we can choose from. So essentially what we're going to have to do is read through this written description, have a look at the physical network layout. And then based on that, we're going to have to select the correct hardware option and slot it in the correct spot. So that's essentially going to need us to or require us to know what do different devices do and based on the requirements that were given, which device should we select. So with that being said, let's get straight into our written description and see if we can figure out what the first one might be. It starts by saying, the company has three key departments within it, one for finance, one for sales, and one for IT. In order to optimize these departments, we need to logically segment the network into three sections, one for each department. So let's go ahead and just pause right here. We wanna take it one step at a time. We don't wanna go ahead and, and get ahead of ourselves because if we try to read all of this, we're gonna get very overwhelmed, right? Already, we should have an idea of what this is describing. What device can you think of that can logically segment a network into three different sections, right? So we have one for finance, one for sales, and one for IT. Now, if we come over to our network rough sketch that we have been given, we have finance, sales, and IT. So these are those three separate little kind of networks that were described. And it said that they were all plugged into a device that can perform that segmentation, that logical segmentation. Okay, what is a device that can do that based on these options here. Pause the video now and I want you to have a guess. And in about three seconds, I'm gonna walk you through the answer there. All right, so make sure you've actually paused the video and had a guess because we're gonna do that right now. Ready, three, two, one. Your answer is, that's right, it's a managed switch, guys. Managed switches allow you to set up VLANs or virtual local area networks, which is essentially where you have one network here, right? But you can actually manage, you can go into a managed switch, which is a switch that allows you to configure it very specifically. And you can say, hey, I actually wanna break up the ethernet ports on this switch. And I wanna say these ethernet ports, these ethernet ports, sorry, belong to the finance local area network that we're kind of creating here. And we then wanna create another local area network on the switch here for sales. And we then want to create another one for IT. And that means that you're creating three separate networks, which is going to make them more efficient. It's going to reduce the amount of traffic in that one specific network as well. So it's going to basically make it a lot more efficient, a lot more secure there too. So the correct answer for that one was managed switch. Hopefully that made sense, guys. And hopefully you were leaning towards that one. Let's go ahead and keep on reading, all right? The device that is responsible for that segmentation then needs to be connected to a less complex version of itself, which will then connect to another device where Ethernet cables will be terminated. Okay, so the device that performs that segmentation, we've already confirmed that is a managed switch. What is a less complex version of that? This device is then connected to a less complex version of itself here. What is a less complex version? of a managed switch. What's the name for it? Let's have a look at our options. See if you can find it. Pause the video and have a guess. Your answer is going to be coming in three, two, one. That's right, it's an unmanaged switch. So 
in case you forget, a managed switch allows you to perform very specific um, settings, right? You can configure, uh, configurations is the word I was looking for. You can configure virtual local area networks and a wide variety of other things. You can really go in and configure the specifics of that. However, an unmanaged switch is just a switch. You can't really configure the settings on it. It just has the ethernet cables plugged in and will use the MAC addresses there to send that data to where it needs to go, but there's no virtual local area networks. There's no additional configuration, okay? So that is the only one it could be because a managed switch is like the high-tech, more expensive version, you could say, whereas an unmanaged switch is the lesser version of that. What else did it say here? It also said that that unmanaged switch will then connect to another device where ethernet cables will be terminated. Okay, so what does this connect to? The unmanaged switch connects to what looks like another little sub network here. And it also connects to this box over here and then this box over here. So we're not entirely sure which box it would be, but we can kind of deduct, can't we? Right? This one here looks like it's a bridge between this larger network over here and this network over here so there's a specific device that you generally want to sit between different networks and it goes here right so we can safely say if we have a good understanding of the different places that different devices go we should know a security based device that should sit in between different networks there Okay, so we can rule that one out just by deducting and understanding what should probably go there. So that leaves these two. This one is connecting to a single device. Well, this one looks like it's connecting to a, a sub network of some kind. So that really just leaves this one as the most likely option there. Now, it said this device is where ethernet cables are terminated. Which one of these devices here is where ethernet cables are terminated? There's only one where they are terminated. Have a guess. Your answer is going to come up in three, two, one. That's right. It's a patch panel, guys. Patch panels are essentially where you take those Ethernet cables from your entire network and you terminate them in that patch panel. All right, we should be familiar with that. I'm not going to go into a super in-depth what a patch panel is any more than that. I do cover it in my A plus 1201 course, which you can find on my YouTube channel. I do nice little drawings and everything there, little stick figure drawings. People seem to like them. So if you want to uh, check that out, that is on my channel. But for now, we're going to go ahead and move on. Hey guys, this video is sponsored by the A plus Core 1 and Core 2 Ultimate Learning Guide. This learning guide has helped many people pass their Core 1 and Core 2 exams, meaning that they can move on to their Network Plus and Security Plus sooner rather then later. In the learning guide, here's what you will get. Detailed notes, revision notes, active recall questions, and multiple choice questions for every single exam objective. Three full-length practice exams with performance-based questions, a document with performance-based questions, a video showing you exactly how to study using multiple choice questions so you will be moving ahead of 99% of other people at a much faster rate because you are studying more effectively. A video giving you test-taking tips in case you get stuck on a question in the exam, a video showing you how to use free AI tools to 10 times your study sessions. And best of all, I want this to be accessible to everyone regardless of your economic position. So I've made it extremely affordable. So if this sounds good to you, you can head over to journeytocyber.com and grab your A plus core one or core two learning guide today. That's that first paragraph done. Now, what about the second one? It says the finance department has four employees, each of which require permanent stationary devices to work on. The IT department is the same. The sales department only requires two permanent stationary devices to complete their work on, but staff members are required to travel on occasion and complete work off-site, so the other devices need to be appropriate for this purpose. All right, so basically that little paragraph is outlining what devices are going to be in finance, what devices are going to be in sales, and what devices are going to be in IT. So let's go one by one. It says the finance department has four employees, each of which require permanent stationary devices to work on. All right, what is a permanent stationary device that you might uh, work on here. Pause the video and see if you can find what the finance section should have. Your answer coming in three, two, one. 
That's right, guys. It's going to be pretty simple, a little too simple that you might be suspicious of it. They're just going to need workstations. That's it. And there may be some questions on your exam where you think, hey, like, is this right? It seems a little too good to be true. Uh, sometimes, look, you just got to trust that you are making the right decision. And in this case, that is the right decision. So hopefully you got that one. Let's have a look at what else they said. They also said the sales department only requires two permanent stationary devices to complete their work on, but staff members are required to travel on occasion and complete work off site. So the other devices need to be appropriate for this purpose. So two permanent and then two empty spaces. And it said the other devices, which applies this to. So what are the permanent ones where we do work? We know it's a workstation. What about the other one? Have a look. I'm sure you can figure this one out. Uh, this one's really not rocket science. Your answer coming in three, in two, in one. That's right, guys. It's just a laptop, right? You take a laptop from one place to another. This one's not too tricky there. Uh, and we missed one there, actually. The IT department said it's the same as the finance department, right? So that's really just giving it away. I'm not even going to do the countdown. We know that that is going to be workstations there. We know that's going to be the case. Okay. Now it might get a little bit trickier, right? It's been a little cruisy. Let's see if it gets any trickier here. To improve security, we need a secure public facing section of the network so customers can interact with us via HTTP, IMAP and SMTP and port 53. On top of all this, we also need an internal server dedicated to name resolution and another one for file sharing. Okay, guys, so we are going to need to use our knowledge of ports and protocols to figure out what goes in the relevant section here. So we essentially have a few slots where this could go, right? We have this slot and this slot. Now, I'm going to give you a little hint, as I talked about before, these sit between networks. So we've got the internet out here, and then we enter another network over here. Generally, you're going to have a security based device sitting between networks. All right? Same for over here. There seems to be a network here, a network here, and this is sitting between them. That's going to be a security based device. So we should be able to almost deduct what that may be. So that leaves us with two potential options. We have this little sub network over here, and we have this little sub network over here. Which one do we think this is talking about? It says to improve security, we need a secure public facing section of the network a secure public facing section of the network. Which box is that talking about? This one or this one? Which little network portion are we looking at here? Pause the video, take a guess. Answer coming in three, two, one. It's gonna be this one, guys. And that is what is referred to, and you will need to know this for your exam, as a demilitarized zone or as a screened subnet. And that is essentially where you have your primary network over here, right, with all of your infrastructure, your IT, your sales, your finance, your switches, your patch panels, everything you got over here. But there's resources that the public may need to access. You don't want to have them accessing that in your primary network because then they could potentially gain uh, access and jump to your other uh, devices that you have in here and then you're completely compromised. Whereas if you have a screen subnet, which is basically like a small network portion only designed for those public facing things that we are discussing, then if they gain access to this, they still have to go through steps to get access to your primary network. So there's some segmentation happening there. So we're looking over here. Now, it says they have something that allows customers to interact with them via HTTP, oops, IMAP and SMTP and port 53. So we've got three what we're going to say are servers here. Based on this, let's have a look. We've got HTTP, let's do that first, okay? Which one of these will allow you to interact via HTTP? Hmm. Pause the video, your answer coming in three, two, one. That's right guys, it's gonna be a web server. You need to know that web servers operate over HTTP and HTTPS, and you also need to know the port number that is associated with that for your exam before you take it. What was the other requirement? There was another one that said IMAP and SMTP. So we need to know what server is going to use IMAP and SMTP. Hmm. Pause the video, have a look, 
your answer is going to be coming to you in three, two, one. That's right, guys. It's going to be your mail server. IMAP and SMTP are both email-based protocols. SMTP sends the mail, IMAP retrieves the mail in a synchronized way. Again, I go over all of this properly in depth in my course on my YouTube channel. This is just a performance-based question, so it's not gonna be super uh, explanatory there on that front. Now, the other final requirement was and on port 53. Now we need to know what protocol operates on port 53. Hmm, what protocol operates on port 53? Pause the video and have a guess. Your answer is coming in three, two, one. It's going to be a DNS server, guys. That is going to be the one. So DNS operates on port 53. So long as you know that, which you are going to need to know before you take your exam, you should have been able to get that one right. Now, let's have a look. We're almost there. It says, on top of all of this, we also need an internal server dedicated to name resolution and another one for file sharing an internal server dedicated to name resolution. Let's start there. Hmm, okay. So we can go here, 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 or here. Let's have a think. Where do we wanna go, first of all? We've already talked about how these are probably gonna be security related because they sit in between networks. So it's gonna be over here. I'm gonna give that one away to you. Which one of these is involved in name resolution? Pause the video if you need more time. Your answer is coming in three, two, one. Here we go, guys. It's DNS. It's an internal DNS server is what that is talking about. DNS servers, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, help translate between human readable URL addresses and IP addresses. All right. We should hopefully know that one. Now, the final or one of the final requirements here is we also need an internal server dedicated to file sharing was that instruction there which one of these is dedicated to file sharing this one again hopefully we got this one you are going to need to know the roles of different servers and be able to identify them based on the given requirements or description your answer coming in three two one it's going to be ftp server or really like a file server right but it's going to be using the protocol FTP in this instance the phrasing is a little weird but that is the correct one to guess or to put in there right a file share server in that instance now that leaves us with the final little sentence which reads it should also go without saying that the entrances to our networks should be protected with relevant security hardware okay so we only have these two which we have been talking about throughout the question we need to use relevant security hardware to protect our demilitarized zone or our screen subnet and to protect our primary network as well. Which one of these can do that job? I know you got this one, guys. Your answer coming in three. Pause the video if you have to. Two, one. It's going to be a firewall, guys. Between your networks, you always want to put a firewall because that is your primary security, stopping people from getting in or stopping people from sending silly things out on ports that they shouldn't really be using or protocols that they shouldn't be using. So look, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. This one may have seemed like more of a networky question, but really it just relied on you understanding what each of these devices do. Based on the given description, could you identify what device was being described essentially and can you put that in the correct place within a network you may very well get a question like this i hope you enjoyed it and if you do want to get your hands on the learning guide you can head over to journey to cyber.com and grab my learning guide over there you've got everything organized by exam objective and for every exam objective you get detailed notes you've got active recall questions you get multiple choice questions and you get three full-length practice exams so it's pretty much like everything that you can get out there all the separate resources but uh, all in one place and all for the most affordable price that I think you are going to find out there. You also get instructional videos where I show you how to actually study too. So you're not going to be walking in blind and I basically hold your hand and walk you through the entire process. So if that sounds good, journey to cyber.com slash 1201. Otherwise, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.